The Tales series is huge in Japan and it's also becoming one of the biggest JRPG series in the West. Truth be told, some of the latest Tales titles haven't pleased fans as much as the older names. However, I'm happy to announce that Bandai Namco's latest installment, Tales of Berseria, is right back on track. Not only that, but it is now my favourite Tales game of all time and that is saying a lot. And this isn't just because the main character is a badass hottie who wears next to nothing. Tales of Berseria is an incredibly strong RPG in just about every area and it's a must play for all JRPG and Tales fans. So, who turned out the lights? It must have been the writers because from the get-go it's clear that Berseria is much darker than the previous games. You start off as young Happy Velvet who spends her days living a quiet life with her younger brother Lafacette and her brother-in-law Artorius. The three have a great relationship but this all turns to shit when Artorius decides to slaughter Lafacette in front of Velvet's eyes. What an asshole! Here her negative energy consumes her and causes her to turn into a demon and slaughter everyone in the village. Artorias then throws her into a dungeon where she's forced to feed on other demons for survival. She has one thing in mind, revenge, and three years later she finally gets a chance after breaking out of the hellhole of her jail cell. The plot revolves around Velvet's tale of revenge and through this journey she will learn more about Artorias' motives and eventually discover the truth behind his actions. This story is sensational, it is engaging at all times and continuously builds up until the very end. And I'll tell you what, this is something that I desperately desired after the lackluster plot of Zestiria. On that note, Berseria is set 300 years prior to Zestiria. They're not directly related, but the many, sometimes subtle links makes each step of the way even more intriguing. So while there's no requirement to play Zestiria first, it will definitely add an extra level of depth when the links become apparent. If you've played the Tales series before, you'll know how consistently incredible many of the characters are. This is achieved by the clear effort the developers put into developing the personalities and backstories, which is presented to us in loads of cutscenes and skits. The characters in Tales of Berseria are no different. Each of the characters have distinct personalities, are well fleshed out and are voiced by an excellent cast of voice actors. It is a lot of fun being on a journey with every single one of them, from Velvet who will take advantage of anyone to reach her end goal, to Aizen who is struck with the Reaper's Curse. Each of the main cast have their own agendas and all of their actions make sense. The antagonists are just as strong. They don't just pop up here and there like a lot of bad guys these days, we actually learn about them. Few games have ever developed such a large cast of characters so well. What are you doing out here in the hall? I left to go out on a little errand, but when I came back, Velvet shut me out of our room. I've been standing here for over half an hour, but she seems no closer to letting me in. I don't know what to do. Any idea what she's doing inside there? No, I don't have a clue. All I can tell you is that sometimes I can hear something like deep breathing and soft moaning. As expected in a Tales game, you control one character at a time in an action-focused style, with the other three AI-controlled party members fighting alongside you. Your other two bench sitters can come in and out of your party at any time in battle. There's a few changes to the gameplay this time around. Attacking consumes soul points, and these recharge after a short time of not attacking. You can gain souls a few ways, such as stunning or killing something, so basically the more souls you have, the longer the combos you can perform. The catch here is that when certain attacks hit you, you lose an entire soul, which greatly limits your combo potential. You may think that keeping your character at the maximum number of souls is the only way to go. Well, you'd be wrong. This is where the character's unique abilities come into play. These abilities are activated when pressing R2, but at the expense of one soul point. This can greatly change the tide of battle and should be used frequently, but only at the right time. Velvet, for instance, goes into beast mode when R2 is hit and completely tears her opponents to shreds. But when she comes out of this mode, she has less souls to combo with. For this reason, managing your souls is very important. Your basic combos are performed by unleashing a string of unique character arts. These can be set in a menu and selecting the right string is very important when fighting against bosses. You will constantly be customizing your arts based on your opponent's weaknesses, which is where a lot of the strategy comes into play. These battles work really well and the six different playstyles bought by the six playable characters ensure plenty of replay value and variation, although I usually just stuck to Velvet as she's the sexiest powerhouse in the game. So how do characters get stronger? Think Final Fantasy IX where each character can learn various passive skills through the equipment that they are currently wearing. 
equip a certain sword and you'll eventually master its skill, which may be something like an increased damage amount against a certain type of monster. Your goal is to learn as many of these as possible and the only way to do this is through fighting. If you fight flawlessly in battle, your grade will be higher and these skills will be learnt faster. There are loads of equipment that can be obtained and I almost always preference learning powerful skills over having the best stats. Unless of course we're talking about difficult bosses, in which case I would customise each character to suit the battle. With that said, I played most of the game on the moderate difficulty and this was definitely a load easier than any other Tales game I've played. I recommend playing on at least hard mode if you want some kind of a challenge. There are loads of fields and dungeons to explore in Berseria. As you would expect, monsters can be seen on screen and only by hitting into them can you initiate a battle. Most of the time they are incredibly easy to avoid. I always wish there were more instances where thought had to be put into dodging enemies, but I guess every Tales game is like this. On the bright side, at least this enables you to run through dungeons quickly, for the dungeon design is the worst part of this game. Each section of a dungeon or field looks exactly like the previous one, and to put simply running through these lengthy areas is a bore. To keep myself interested, I just put the lady characters in skimpy costumes and kept my eyes on the prize. Berseria reaches near perfection in so many areas, but I'll end this review with a couple of other smaller issues that I had. Firstly is the rather disappointing soundtrack. There were a couple of standout tracks, but to be honest, the music was a step back from Zestiria, which had some incredible music. The second point is the voiced conversations in towns when talking to non-playable characters. All of your party members get involved in the conversations here, but Velvet is the only one who is visibly present. Everyone else is, uh, inside Velvet. I wish I was inside Velvet. Magikazam! Magikazam! I think I've said enough. Tales of Berseria is sensational. The outstanding plot and incredible cast of characters makes this a title that is very difficult to put down. The only significant complaint I have is in the dungeon design. Every single corridor or field map looks exactly like the previous screen. This and the lack of complexity makes dungeon crawling a bore, but at least there's an awesome battle system that will keep the enemy encounters interesting. If you're a fan of the Tales series or JRPGs in general, this title is a must play. Do yourself a favour and go buy Tales of Berseria now. This was Hellfire RPGs, thanks for watching. What did you think of this game? Let me know in the comments. If you liked this review, hit like and subscribe for more RPG videos. See you next time.